Good morning, guys. Dr. Chad here. Welcome back to another home workout. Today is going to be a really nice one. We're going to be on the floor. Um, now, this is not a floor exercise that you can necessarily do on the bed. Um, you really need like a firm uh, surface. Uh, so you could be on the carpet, you could be on a yoga mat, anything like that. But if, if getting on the floor is difficult for you, um, this may be a day where you want to go back and do one of the other standing exercises or even better, uh, go back and do one of the um, routines where we, we get on our back. That way you, you still, and you could do that on the bed. Um, but uh, for those who can do it, uh, this is going to be really good. And if you think you can't do it, I would suggest just try. We've had a lot of people. I know Judy said she didn't think she could get on the floor at the beginning. And over time, after doing all the standing exercises, her mobility improved and strength improved and, and she was able to get on the floor. So that may be you too. So don't give up on getting on the floor. I'd always encourage you to get on the floor. One of the best things you can do for resistance in terms of your body is using the floor. Your relationship with the floor is very important. Uh, being able to get up and down with independence is going to be something that's going to be a good test, good assessment of your longevity. So get on the floor, my friends, if you can. Good morning, Andrea. How are you guys doing? Um, other quick announcement. You'll notice uh, two things at, in, the, in these posts now. Um, if you look at the content above this video, I'm always putting the equipment that you need. Uh, so when you come into the workout, you know what you need to get out. And also at the very, very bottom of the post, you notice I'm putting a bunch of hashtags. And, and I'm doing that to highlight the, the core focus of the workout. So you can just go to the search menu of this private group, put in a hashtag and whatever that is, and find, find uh, workouts that fit your needs. So for instance, today I have hashtag core, hashtag plank, hashtag wrist, hashtag floor, hashtag low back, hashtag hip. And those are all the things that we're working on, but it just helps you find these workouts a lot easier. Also. We're uploading all these things to the unit section. Everything's archived. Everything's on our, our Native Path YouTube channel. Everything is also going to be uh, is in the process, but it's now started on our Native Path blog. If you want to find all our workouts, all our breathing courses, and all these great recipe videos that Rachel is doing, so um, hope you guys uh, get easy access to all that. Um, many of you have been asking how you share with your friends. You can always invite them in the group. So good morning, Cass. So yesterday you guys did amazing. It was a really good workout for uh, many of you. Darlene, uh, I love what you're saying here. Uh, you're continuing to feel stronger and you're noticing yourself uh, becoming more tone everywhere, right? Um, and that's, that's really important um, because I'm not going just for the arms. I'm not just going for the core. I'm not just going for the, I'm going for everything. You know, I'm going for full body hygiene is what we're working on. So uh, Darlene's a great example of what happens when we just stay consistent. We just keep doing it and really enjoy the process and you get stronger. Working out is not have to be an angry face and going to the gym and getting on some machine that you're not designed to move in. Uh, you notice I don't use many, many machines, it's just you. So good morning, Carol. Um, Cass, you said you had a great day yesterday. Cass, you noticed uh, some imbalance when you were doing the figure eights. Um, you noticed that your, your right side was weak. You had a little tw twinge on your right leg as well and you're noticing you're really having to concentrate on staying balanced in your body. So what you're describing here is, a, is what I would call a very good thing. Um, and when you notice imbalances, especially in your stance, like when you're standing or when you're sitting, or like today when we're getting on all fours, um, when you notice that imbalance, you're creating awareness around a nervous system habit. Like many of us have nervous system habits that we've been doing for our whole life, and we gotta bring awareness to that and then create it. So you're doing the right things. And over time, when we bring more structural balance to the body, uh, it's likely you won't have that anymore. But just keep working on that, keep practicing that. Um, yeah, and Ann had the question of anything we can do about the arms and the triceps, especially for saggy arms. And I mentioned yesterday, that's a good indication that the nutrition needs to be dialed in. Uh, getting rid of sugar, toxic fats, grains, conventional dairy is really focusing on whole real food, quality proteins, vegetables, good fats, drinking lots of water, sleeping well. Those are lifestyle issues. Uh, but the other thing is something that we're doing today, which is planks. We're getting on the floor. <laughs> we're going to be working on those shoulders and those, those arms are going to be working. So, all right, guys, here we go. Um, again, we're going to be on the floor. We're going to start with some wrist and nerve stretches. Um, we always want to keep those things healthy. And, and uh, let's get started here. So on all fours, okay, we're gonna put our hands on the ground. We're gonna do some, some wrist work today. So put your hands on the ground. And what I want you to do is have your fingers a little, little bit spread out, hands just under the shoulders, okay? 
And what you're going to do is just go over it and go back. See from this angle? Go over and go back. You're keeping the base of the hand on the ground. Only put as much pressure as what feels comfortable. The wrists are delicate. There's a lot of moving joints in there. A lot of bones in there, a lot of ligaments and tendons in there. So really be easy. You want to make sure you're moving directly over it. You're not going to the side or anything like that. Directly over the hands with the shoulders. And it's just a real simple pressure on, pressure off. Pressure on, pressure off. Use your breathing with this. Elbows stay straight. There might be a tendency to bend the elbows and avoid it. Don't avoid it, just feel it. Right in here. Good. Good, real gently come back. If you can sit on your heels. Now we're gonna take the hands Turn them around with the fingers facing towards you. Okay, just like so. Again, hands under the hips, elbows straight, and now you're just moving backwards. Really stretching those wrist flexors. This is another thing that helps carpal tunnel. I mentioned a lot how in our culture, we spend a lot of time with flexion, you know, slouching, bending our neck forward, bending our spine, but it's also in our hands. We tend to grab things, type, text, grab the remote, you know, hold the lawnmower, hold the bags. All of that is curling of the fingers, flexion, right? So that gets closed off and adapted to a shortened position over time. And what we're doing with these stretches is we're going into extension. We're uh, extending the joints in the hands throughout in the fingers. And we're also stretching those wrist flexors that are really tight, doing what we can to open up and prevent any carpal tunnel type issues so important that you maintain function in your hands. You don't want to overlook the wrist and the hands. Okay, very good, very good. And now what we're gonna do, take your fingers, these are called wrist push-ups, fingers on the ground, okay? And what you're gonna do here is put the back of one palm on the ground, put the back of the other palm on the ground, and then switch up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, just nice and easy. Up, down, down. Up, up, down, down. Good morning, Anna. Down, down. Up, up, down, down. Up, up, down, down. Nice and easy. Up, up, down, down. Be really gentle, really gentle. You don't have to go into a painful range, just go into a slightly uncomfortable range, but not painful. We don't wanna flare things up. We just wanna wake things up. Get things moving. Remember to use your breath. One more. Okay, now back to this position here with our palms directly under the shoulders. What we're gonna do now is keep the fingers on the ground and just lift up one palm and back down and then lift up the other and back down. You can see how I'm kind of moving over the fingers and extending them, right? You might get some cracks and little pops in there. Just really gentle, really gentle. This is gonna open up a lot of restrictions in the hand, keeping those fingers on the ground. Frees up a lot of the nerves in your hands, so it helps you maintain and improve sensation. Your ability to touch and feel, really important. Opening up those hands. This is one of the most overlooked things. When you go see that hand doctor, <laughs> they're not looking at this stuff, unfortunately. But that's because they just didn't, didn't learn about it. That's okay. So nice and easy. Remember, exhale over and down. Exhale over. And down. And these wrist stretches are a little more aggressive because we're using the, the floor. Um, if you went back to uh, the routine that we did on Monday, I believe that might have been, I don't know, session 42, 41 maybe, uh, we did some things in the seated position that are uh, less invasive, so to speak. 
but these are really good if you can do them. Okay, very good. Okay, coming on up, and you can stay in the sitting position. You can get on a chair for this nerve stretch. What we're going to do is take our hands to the side, palms up, okay, and really gently take your head to the side and then the other side. One side and then the other side. Keep the elbows straight. Keep the hands slightly behind you. Don't bring them forward. We're creating length on the nerves. Keep the palms up. And when you go to the side, you really lengthen that nerve. So we're gonna take my right ear to my right shoulder. I stretch the nerves on my left arm, vice versa. Use your breath. Might get some tingling, some numbness. Hang in there. It's coming, it's coming. Almost done. Good, and then now. Move some circles, move it around. Get some blood flow in there. Now we're gonna do two rounds of scapular push-ups. We've done these a long time ago, but we're gonna review them again. 10 can openers and a 30 second prayer stretch, okay? So with the scapular push-ups, you know, you have this movement. I want you to get in quadruped position. And the first thing I want you to do is keep your elbows straight and push up even more. And now what I want you to do is let it fall. Let the shoulder blades come together. And also with your hands, instead of having them just under your shoulders, right here with the fingers forward, have the fingers pointed out and bring them just a little bit wider, okay? So instead of being here, you wanna bring them here. And what you're gonna do, push up, let it fall. Push up, let it fall. Notice the elbows stay straight. All the movement is coming from those shoulder blades sliding forward, letting them fall and pinch back together. Sliding forward, really pushing out, letting them fall, pinch back together. Again, push, fall, push, fall, push, fall. And this strengthens that subscapularis muscle. You know, many of us have a wing scapulas that are so weak. And this right here creates a lot of proprioception, awakes the, the muscles that help keep your shoulder blade on your rib cage where it belongs, helps create a, sh a healthy shoulder complex. And I know many of you, this might feel really awkward. It's just because early on you don't have the, you may not have the awareness, the body awareness of actually how to do this. And that's why we keep practicing, keep coming back to it. Let's do one more. Okay, very good. And now we're gonna do can openers. So in this quadruped position, you're gonna take your hand behind your head, right? Take one elbow to one elbow and then come up. One, two. This is working thoracic rotation, three. Try to turn and rotate as much as you can, really opening up your chest on one side. I'm doing my right arm, looks like my left, but you can do either one. So two more here, one, two. Other side, hand behind the head, going down and then up. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So good for your upper back. Okay, and let's go right into those wrist stretches again. Okay, remember hands just wider than the hips, fingers pointed out. I'm gonna show you from this angle here. And go ahead and push up and then let them fall, pinch together. Push up, let them fall, pinch together up, fall, and pinch together. And over time, see if you can put less weight on your knees and more in your hands. But keep those elbows straight. Try to get as much range of motion as you can in retraction of the shoulder blades and protraction of the shoulder blades. Retraction, protraction. Retraction, protraction. Feel those shoulder blades moving on your rib cage. Feel those muscles underneath your shoulder blade really doing the movement. It's not coming from your elbows. It's not coming from your rotator cuff. 
It's coming from the muscles underneath your scapula and inside, in between your shoulder blades. Scapula is the shoulder blade. Pushing, bringing together. Pushing, bringing together. Pushing. Good. Okay, now let's go back to the can openers again. Hands behind the head, coming together, and then up. Open in the chest. Exhaling as you go up. Open, screw that bottom hand in the ground, keep a shoulder stable position. One more, switching arms, other hand behind the head, coming together and up. One, two, three, four, open up, five, exhale, six, Good, and now let's go to a little prayer stretch. Just go ahead and bring your feet together, widen your knees, and then reach out. Hold for a bit. Good, get your hips all the way down to your legs. Really bending the hips, bending the knees. Okay, you know, can you go ahead and come on up? So now let's go ahead and go into the workout portion. I was gonna do more rounds of that, but yeah, two rounds of that is plenty. And now what we're gonna do with the workout, we're gonna really hit it today, guys. It's gonna be nice. So we're gonna do five rounds of a 20 second plank and a 20 second prone extension. We're really just resting there. I'll show you what that is. And then we're gonna do six alternating bird dogs on each side with a three second hold. That's where we're gonna work the hip and the low back. Also working on shoulder stability and then do eight cat camels. So I've got a timer here. We're gonna start with the plank. We're gonna be on our elbows and toes. And remember when we're doing this plank, it's about being tight. It's not about being loose. So really lock your legs straight, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your pelvic floor like you have to go to the restroom, brace your stomach and pull your elbows to your feet. No faces, no holding your breath. Keep breathing, but stay tight. That's the art of staying stable, okay? Hey dad, how you doing? All right, so I got the timer here for us. And when I go, we're gonna go together. On the count of three, one, two, Three, feet together, lock the legs straight, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the pelvic floor, pull the elbows to the feet, squeeze, 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 hold, hold, 10 more seconds, breathe, be able to move your face, squeeze your glutes, lock your legs straight, squeeze, 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 hold, 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 and then come down and rest. And breathe on your elbows, okay? This is a rest period right here. Just relax in this extension period. I'm gonna be here for 10 more seconds. And then we're gonna come up nice and gentle. Just try to look forward and relax your glutes while you're here. Five more seconds. Breathe. Good, now go ahead and come on up. And what we're gonna do now is six bird dogs on each side. So on all fours, you're gonna take your opposite arm, opposite leg, and go out. Make a fist with your forearm. Hold for three seconds, point your toe down, two, three, switch, reverse, one, two, three, hold, two, three, return, two, three, switch, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three, switch, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, Two, three, imagine a bowl of soup on your low back that you don't want to spill. Hold, two, three, down, two, three, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three. Okay, now in this position, stay here. We're gonna do cat camels. 
So you're arching up, bringing the head in, pushing the shoulders away, and then arching the other direction, breathing out. Seven, eight. Now we're gonna go right back to the planks for round two. We're doing five rounds of this, okay? So on the elbows, on the toes, and go. Squeeze the glutes, lock the legs straight, squeeze the pelvic floor, pull the elbows to the feet, squeeze, 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 turn, rotate the head, still breathe, stay tight, even tighter, squeeze the glutes, lock the legs straight, squeeze the pelvic floor, Hold, 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 and come down gently. Prop up on the elbows, breathe nice and easy. Relax the glutes, relax the legs. Gentle extension to the low back. We're resting in extension. Good, five more seconds here. Nice and easy. And very gently come up, back to all fours, okay? Doing the bird dogs again. Opposite arm, opposite leg, six total. And up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three. Up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three. Remember the bowl of soup on your low back that you don't want to spill. Stay tight, squeeze your pelvic floor. Try not to let your hip rise, so really make sure that belly button faces the floor. Down, two, three, that's three. Up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three. Up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three. One more round, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two. Three, last one, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three. Tap camels, 10 of them. Arching up, arching down. Arching up, arching down. Use your breath with some inhale up. Exhale down through the mouth. Inhale through the nose up. Exhale through the mouth down. Inhale through the nose up. Exhale through the mouth down. Two more. Good, going back down for round three. On the elbows, on the toes, and begin. Back to the plank. Hold, squeeze the glutes, lock the legs straight, stay tight, stay tight, squeeze the pelvic floor, be able to turn your head, pull the elbows to the feet, squeeze, 10 more seconds, hold, 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 stay tight, squeeze, 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 three more seconds, hold, hold, and rest. Bringing down the hips, on the elbows, relaxing the glutes, relax your face, nice easy breaths. Good, 10 more seconds here. We'll go back to bird dogs. You guys are doing really good. Hitting those planks today, working those shoulders. Good, and coming up nice and gently. On all fours. In this position, get a good stable position. Take your opposite arm, opposite leg. Three seconds out. Two, three, hold. Two, three, down. Two, three, switch. Up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three, switch, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three, switch, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three, switch. Stay nice and balanced the whole time. Hold, two, three, down, two, three, switch, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, 
two, three, good. Back to cat camels, eight of these, arching up, down, up, down. Inhale through the nose, arching up, exhale through the mouth, arching down. Four more. Going back to the plank, on the elbows, on the toes, and beginning in three, two, one, go. Squeeze the glutes, lock the legs straight, squeeze the pelvic floor, stay tight, stay tight. Be, be able to breathe, breathe, but stay tight. Pull the elbows to the feet, stay even tighter. How long can you stay up here? Do the best you can, five more seconds. Stay tight, stay tight, stay tight. Hold, hold, and done. Drop the hips. Breathe. This is round four. You're doing good, guys. Relax the glutes. Relax the legs. Breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Nice and gently. We're going to come up to our bird dogs. Go ahead and come on up. And back on all fours. Take the opposite arm, opposite leg, and real gently. Remember, say tighten the pelvis. Extend. One, two, three. Three, hold, two, three, down, two, three, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three, two more, up, two, Three, hold, two, three, down, two, three, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three. Good. Back to cat camel on all fours. And we'll go ahead and arch up. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Up. Down. Last one. Up. Down. Okay, back to our last round. Last round of planks, guys. You're doing good. I'll get ready. Beginning in three, two, one, go. Squeeze the glutes. Lock the legs straight. Squeeze the pelvic floor even tighter. Pull the elbows to the feet. The last round, make this your best round. Stay strong, look straight to the floor. Relax your face, turn your head. Breathe while you stay tight. Pull those elbows to the feet. Stay even tighter, three seconds. Let's go guys, stay tight, stay tight, and drop. Whoo, you betcha, you betcha. Good, and breathe, relax the glutes, relax the legs. Almost done with the hard part. You guys are doing good, but finish strong. Really good repetition here on these bird dogs. Really focus on the form. Remember that bowl of soup. We're coming up. Don't spill that bowl of soup. Nice level low back. Keep the belly button facing the spine, okay? Facing the floor. Opposite arm, opposite leg. And here we go. Right here. Hold. Two, three, down. Two, three. Switch. Two, three. Three, hold, two, three, down, two, three, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three. Making a fist, point your feet to the ground. Up, two, three, down, two, three, up, two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three, up. Two, three, hold, two, three, down, two, three. All right, last round of cat camels, back on all fours. Inhaling, arching up, exhaling, arching down. Inhale up through the nose, 
exhale, arching down out of the mouth. Four more. that guys five rounds of planks there you did it you did it way to go very good job very good job so we're gonna end on a cool down here we're gonna go back to the hip stretch that we've been doing it's so important we keep hip mobility so we're gonna be in this position right here hips on the ground thank you for your likes by the way and your hearts don't please don't leave without giving me a heart <laughs> and then elbows stay straight okay feet just wider and then nice and easy what we're gonna do is just take the knees to the side and then the other side. Just so we stay consistent with this hip mobility here. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Exhaling as you go down. Remember the hip stays down. You're not rotating the whole body. Try to keep the chest forward and you can feel it. You can feel that internal rotation that you're putting on the hip, which is so important every time you walk. Your hip should naturally internally rotate when your knee is behind you. When it doesn't, that's when we get too much movement coming through the pelvis, too much movement coming through the back, All right? So back pain, knee pain, I say look at the hip. All your answers are there, most of them at least. A lot of them, everything's connected. Everything's connected. Lots of patients been told that, well, they just gotta take one thing, one exercise to fix this one thing, but it's all connected. Trust me, trust me. You got a foot problem, you might have a shoulder problem. <laughs> I've seen it a million times. Okay, nice and easy, okay? Very gentle. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you guys the right way to do a hip flexor stretch. So many of you heard about the psoas muscle and how it's, uh, it connects to the spine, it crosses over the hip joint comes down to your femur and on many of us it's very tight because we spend so much time with our hips hips being flexed a lot when we sit when we're riding a car uh, but there's a right way to do a hip flexor stretch and a wrong way to do a hip flexor stretch so I'm going to show you the right way it's really important that we release that because it allows the pelvis to come back to neutral get your spine in a better position so with this what I suggest you have we're going to get in a half kneeling position so I know for some of you this may di be difficult so it's important that you get yourself as comfortable as you can Okay, so get, get a nice pillow, maybe a nice uh, yoga blanket or something. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here. This right here, I'm gonna get in a half kneeling position, okay? So my knee is going on the pillow, bringing my other leg forward, okay? Right here. This is the position I want you guys in. And what I want you to do is this back hip, on the, the one where the knee is on the ground, I want you to think about squeezing that and then translate your body forward, okay? You don't wanna be being loose in there. That's hip extension, that's not what we're going for. That's not stretching the psoas. Squeeze the glute which locks the pelvis and then translate forward. You're gonna feel a stretch right on the side here, okay? So lock the glute, translate forward and hold. Feel it right in here. That's when you know you're on the right track, okay? Squeeze, 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 hold, hold, hold. No faces, just go right up to that point where you feel a stretch and hold it there. And breathe. So releasing those hip flexors, really, really important for back pain, for your function, your mobility, the quality of your gait. But that glute has to be squeezed. Make sure, keep checking, you can tap it if you want. Tap, 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 squeeze, 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 squeeze. About another 10 seconds here. Hold, 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 and coming back. And now we'll switch. Same thing, other side. I'm gonna back up just so make sure everybody can see me. Okay. Other knee, right here. Squeezing this glute. Stay tight, translating forward. Notice my spine stays vertical. I'm not coming forward. I'm not slouching. Stay tall, translate forward. Feel the stretch right in here. This has to be tight. This has to be tight. This has to be tight. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Sit up nice and tall. Feel that stretch. You can be next to a couch or something, some table if you like. It's an easy way to do a hip flexor stretch. 
Again, I know some of you have a hard time getting in the kneeling position. Um, and if these exercises on the floor are too difficult for you, you can always go back and do the archived videos with something we're doing standing. I'm just trying to give something for everybody that everybody can get something and different people need different things. Just remember the hashtags, the things you want to work on. You can hashtag floor, you can hashtag standing, you can hashtag shoulders, you can hashtag neck. You're going to find workouts that are specific to you. Okay, and we'll gently come out of that. And that, my friends, does it for today. Let's just end on some breaths here. Go ahead, take a big breath in through the nose. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Now let's do an inhale and hold. Exhale. One more. Inhale and hold. Exhale. Okay, guys. So before you check out, um, hearts, hearts and likes never hurt anybody. Comments are always always useful for me. Hey, Kira. Hey, David. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, please let me know how this was for you. How were the, the five planks? How'd you like those things? Um, are you getting better at them? I hope you are. I'm going to end with a little quote here. As a uh, Miss, Miss Dr. Brenda and, and little Maya Mae Princess are coming back from their morning walk. You can come on in, babe. Uh, this quote is also from uh, Byron Katie, who I mentioned last time, I just adore. Uh, but the quote is, it's not your job to like me, it's mine. It's not your job to like me, it's mine. And many of us, I mean, myself included my whole life, I was waiting for external validation. And what we're really searching for is self-love. We can't give away love unless we have it. So what does self-love look like to you? You know, um, to me, it looks like showing up for myself, journaling about the amazing things about my life, the things I'm grateful for, keeping myself in check on ways that I'm giving to others, uh, being aware of how I'm, I'm receiving things without even asking for it, and then creating space for dreams. You know, we're looking forward to this life that I want to create. Um, but it also means taking care of myself, eating well, breathing well, um, <laughs> moving well, uh, calling other people, asking them how I can help, being of service, you know, expressing myself with art and music and things that light me up. So those are things that are uh, self-love to me. I would love to know what self-love looks like to you. You know, how, how do you uh, take action and appreciate yourself? Because it's not your job to like me, it's mine. You know, no ex external validation. What we're searching for is inside, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you so much for your comments and your likes. Um, hope you're getting stronger and more mobile and less pain. And I will see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.